Hello, my name is Mr. Barr and I teach fourth and fifth grade at Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. And this is our second day of our narrative fiction lesson where we're gonna be reading the book, Akiak, written and illustrated by Robert J. Blake. Now, I recorded the first lesson yesterday and there was a little bit of a problem because it was really weird having no students in front of me. So I worked really hard today and I was able to find three students that I can teach. Gathered here on the carpet, we have Bobby, Bryson, the Roomba, and Abraham. Let's remember that while we read today, we're gonna to be paying special attention to our elements of fiction, characters, the people in the story, setting, where and when the story happens, and plot, what happens to the characters in the story. To refresh our memory, yesterday we read about how Akiak is racing in her final Iditarod race. She's the lead sled dog on our team, and she started out in first place this year. But after getting snow stuck in her paw, she had to stop racing. Let's see what happens next. Day five. By morning, most of the other dog teams had passed through the Ophir checkpoint. The wind was building and the pilot was in a hurry to leave. Akiak tore at the leash as the volunteer, and volunteer just means a person who is helping out for free. Akiak tore at the leash as the volunteer brought her to the airplane. Get that dog in, the pilot hollered. I want to get out of here before the storm hits. Akiak jumped and pulled and snapped. All she wanted was to get back on the trail, to run, to win. Then, all at once, the wind gusted, the plane shifted, and Akiak twisted out of the handler's grip. By the time they turned around, she was gone. Day six, Akiak ran while the storm became a blizzard. And a blizzard just means a really, really serious and big snowstorm. She knew that Mick and the team were somewhere ahead of her. The wind took away the scent and the snow took away the trail, but she still knew the way. She ran and she ran until the blizzard became a whiteout. And a whiteout means that it's snowing so hard that all you can see is the color white everywhere you look. Then she could run no more. While Mick and the team took refuge, or shelter, in Galena, seven hours ahead, Akiak burrowed, and burrowed means to dig into the ground, into a snowdrift to wait out the storm. In the morning, the mound of snow came alive and out pushed Akiak. Turn to your partner, and remember, your partner can be a family member or a friend that's next to you, it can be a pet or a stuffed animal, or it can be an imaginary person that you're calling on the phone. But I want you to tell your partner what has happened in the story so far that we have read today. You might have told your partner about how Akiak escaped from the plane and ran off on her own. Or you might have said that Akiak is chasing down Mick and her team, but got caught in a snow blizzard. Day 7. Word had gone out that Akiak was loose. Trail volunteers knew that an experienced lead dog an experience just means wise and with a lot of practice. An experienced lead dog would stick to the trail. They knew she'd have to come through Unilicle. She did. Six hours after Mick and the team had left, Akiak padded softly, cautiously, into the checkpoint. Her ears alert, her wet nose sniffed the air. The team had been there. She could tell. Suddenly, cabin doors flew open. 
Five volunteers fanned out and tried to grab her. Akiak zigged around their every zag and took off down the trail. Call ahead to Shack Tulik, a man shouted. Day 8 At Shack Tulik, Mick dropped two more dogs and raced out, still six hours ahead of Akiak. Hungry now, it had been two days since she had eaten. Akiak pounded over the pack trail. For thirst, she drank out of the streams, the ice broken through by the sled teams. She struggled into Shack Tulik in the late afternoon. Three men spotted her and chased her right into the community hall, where some mushers were sleeping. Tables overturned and coffee went flying. Then, one musher opened the back door, and she escaped. Go find them, girl, he whispered. At Koyuk, Akiak raided the musher's discard pile for food. No one came after her. At Elam, people put food out for her. Almost everybody was rooting for Akiak to catch her team. Turn to your partner, tell him what has happened in the story so far. You may have told your partner that at each checkpoint, everyone's trying to catch Akia, but she keeps escaping. You also might have mentioned that towards the end, People are starting to help Akiak and even giving her food. We're going to stop reading there today and we're going to focus in on one element of fiction, the setting. Remember the setting is where and when the story takes place. My question to you today is how important is the setting to this story, Akiak? Well, one way you can think about it is if this story had a different setting, would it change the way the story happens? Would it change the plot or the characters? Let's use an example that everyone knows. Let's talk about the story of Spider-Man. Spider-Man famously lives in New York City, a massive urban area with millions of people and lots and lots of very tall buildings. If we want to know if the setting is important to a story like Spider-Man, we could say what would happen if we changed it and all of a sudden Spider-Man lived on a farm. Well, he probably wouldn't be able to swing off of tall buildings if there weren't any tall buildings on the farm he was living at. And what kind of villains would he encounter out in the country? I think we could say that the setting to Spider-Man is really important because all of the action that takes place depends on the setting being New York City. Today we're going to do a think and write activity. Make sure you have pencil and paper ready. We're going to write a response to the question, how important is the setting in, to the story of Akia? I'm going to model what your written response might look like. The first thing that you should do is make sure you clearly state the title of the book and the author. And then I'm going to make sure I restate the question that's being asked in my next sentence. Don't forget to indent. And I'm going to say this, the setting is extremely important to the story of Akiak. Mm because it really couldn't happen in a different setting. And now I gotta explain this. The story takes place in Alaska. Hmm. What can I say? And it follows sled dog racing in the Iditarod. I'm just going to explain this a little bit more. 
since the Iditarod only happens in Alaska, then the story couldn't take place in any other setting, in another setting. And now at the end, I want to make sure I restate my overall answer to the question. Therefore, the setting is extremely important to the story of Akiak. Now it's your turn. Go ahead and start writing your response to the question, how important is the setting to the story of Akiak? I'm gonna be right here monitoring my three students they better be writing themselves. Class, come on, it's time to write. There will be no recess today if you don't get this done. Maybe we aren't participating because we don't like books about dogs. Wait a minute. You can talk? And why do you have a... British accent. If you're done writing, share your response with someone in your house. And if there's no one there to share with, you can read it aloud to yourself or read it to your partner that you were using before. Make sure if you notice corrections you need to make or mistakes, that you correct them just like you would if you were in school. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. I have a book that I'm going to read today, and it's called Peach Boy, a Japanese legend. It's retold by Gail Sakurai and illustrated by Makiko Nagano. I'm going to start reading here, and you start reading yourself. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website. 